Making burgers so tasty? McDonald's are going to be wondering what your secret is. If you aren't smashing down some chicken taco burgers this weekend, that should be illegal. Mm. Let's get into it. Today, we're going to make some chicken taco burgers. Now, cooking time for this recipe will be one hour. Or for those of you who love to use my beer timer, you're looking at a two beer cook. Cheers. By liking this video and giving it a thumbs up, you're accepting that if it's in a bun, it's a burger. Now for this recipe, we're going to need some chicken thighs. And lucky for me, Mick out of Gippsland Premium Meats always has chicken thighs on stock. He loves his chicken. And because we know Mick loves his job a little bit too much, we should glove up before we touch any chicken. Now using a sharp knife, we're just gonna make three diagonal cuts across the chicken thighs. Now this is just going to give the seasoning we make more surface area to come in contact with. Do not try and use breast fillets for this recipe, or I'll be forced to track you down and give you a stern talking to. The chicken will be pretty bland unless we season it. So let's make some taco seasoning that you can use to season any type of meat you want. Now into a rub shaker, you want to add a funnel. And then you want to add the ingredients, two teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of onion powder, two teaspoons of dried oregano. Not to be confused with the American made up seasoning called oregano. One tablespoon of cumin powder, four teaspoons of smoky paprika, a half teaspoon of chili powder, two teaspoons of kosher salt, and one teaspoon of finely cracked black pepper. Shake this up and prepare your taste buds for happiness. Now this amount of rub is perfect for one kilogram of meat. Now grab some extra virgin olive oil and drizzle it over the chicken thighs. Then using a basting brush, you wanna brush the oil so the entire side of these thighs is covered in the olive oil. Sprinkle over the taco seasoning we just made. Don't be shy with it, get it on there. Flip all the thighs over, oil up this side. Use the brush again to make sure they're all covered with the oil. Give the rub shaker a good job and make sure these thighs are fully covered in all the tasty goodness that we just made. These chicken thighs can go in the fridge now for about an hour. That's gonna allow all of the seasoning to attack the chicken thighs, beat it up and punish it with flavor. Or it gives us enough time to get the barbecue ready and make something else to go with it. Smart is everywhere these days because you're sharing my videos, so thank you. Instead of the standard guacamole that everyone seems to do when you're talking tacos, let's be different and make an avocado crema. Now, into a blender, you're going to need to throw the insides of one avocado, minus the pip, and we definitely don't need the skin. 150 ml of sour cream, the juice of one lime, roughly about two tablespoons, a quarter of a cup of compressed fresh parsley. All of it. One garlic clove that's been crushed, a quarter of a teaspoon of cumin powder, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt flakes, and a quarter of a teaspoon of finely cracked black pepper. Put the lid on and mix until smooth. And then transfer the avocado crema to a squeezy bottle. I find using a spoon just helps it. It's a lot easier. Do yourself a favor, make a double batch of this. It is that good, it's gonna go, everyone's gonna want some. They're actually gonna want a lot more. Also, cut the tip off your squeezy bottle. It just opens up the spout a little bit more and it gives you a nice easy flow when you're squeezing out the avocado crema. Don't be fooled by the name avocado crema by thinking it means something all fancy. It just means avocado cream. Today, I'm using a 57 centimeter Webat kettle and I'm pairing it up with a kettle comb. Why? Because I wanna be cooking indirectly with a heat of 240 degrees Celsius today 
And how I'll do that is by placing the kettle cone in the middle of the charcoal rack. Then I'll add enough briquettes to three quarter fill the kettle cone into a chimney starter, light them up. Once they're fully alight, I'll dump them into the kettle cone. And as usual, I'll grab an old pair of tongs and because I wasn't watching what I was doing, I'll now place the lit briquettes into the kettle cone. Carefully place the grill back in and I'll put the lid back on, opening all the vents and we're gonna give the grill 10 minutes to warm up. A big thanks has to go out to everyone who supported the channel by buying me a beer. And if you'd like to jump on board and help support the channel, there's a link in the comments. The grill is hot, so it's time to get the thighs into the barbecue. Off you go. By placing the thighs around the outer part of the cooking grill, this is where that high heat from the kettle cone is being forced. And we are essentially air frying our food. And because we aren't using direct heat, our food isn't directly over the fuel. So we won't get any fat flare ups. <coughs> Pop the lid back on and grab yourself a drink. Chicken is cooked and classed as no death chicken once it hits 74 degrees Celsius internally. But we're gonna push these sides a little bit further and reaching about 80 degrees Celsius internally. And this is just gonna help break down that collagen. But don't worry, they'll still be moist. Smart. If you didn't know, the Weber lid vent creates a hot spot while cooking. As the cold oxygen is sucked in through the bowl vent up and around our fuel, it is then pushed back out this lid vent. So to ensure an even cook, I recommend turning the lid a third of the way every 20 minutes. Do you prefer dark or white meat when it comes to chicken? I don't know, let me know in the comments and tell me what your favorite recipe is. It's time to make up these burgers. Now I'm not toasting my bun today, but I'm sure I'll get roasted in the comments for not doing so. On the heel of the bun or the lower section, we want to drizzle on some of that avocado crema sauce. Add some lettuce for some much needed texture and crunch. And now add on some sliced tomato, as most salsas are tomato based. It's time to grab the chicken off the grill. Oh, look at the color of them. I wish you could smell this. Place one of the chicken fillets on the burger and drizzle with more of that avocado crema and then place the top of the bun on. So you know, this is bread. If we put the contents of that burger in this bread, that will be a chicken sandwich. Guess what? It's in a burger bun, so it's called a burger. Or for those of you still going to argue the point, the name hamburger or its close cousin, burger, came from the name of the town it was first invented in, Hamburg. It's got nothing to do with the fillings, it's the name of the place it was invented. Hey Weber, once again, I have to thank myself for sponsoring my own video, because you didn't. Even after you conducted a worldwide survey asking people where they get their Weber tips and tricks and recipes from. And guess what? I came in second just behind Jamie Oliver, worldwide. It's okay though, I understand. You don't wanna work with me, it's all good. Some days I cook a meal and it instantly makes me hungry. This is one of those cooks. It's food fusion at its best. The only thing left to do is shove one in your face hole and enjoy. Hmm.